Okay, so in this video, I'm going to cover filter views and subtotal function. So usually when you want to filter your data, you can go under data and click create filter. That is going to create our regular filters, just like this. Now this time, instead of doing this, I'm going to turn this off. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go under this filter views. And I'm going to click create new filter view. So this thing is going to show up. So I'm going to name this new view and it shows what range we're using for this filter view. That's fine. You can also see there's the settings button all the way to the right. You can click on it and you can rename it. You can update the range, meaning the change the data range. Uh, you can uh, copy this filter view and you can delete it. So for now, I'm going to leave it at this and X out of it. Now you can see that that whole thing disappeared, but we actually saved it. So if I go back to my data tab and filter views, you'll see there's that new view now appearing here. And if I click on it, that same thing is going to show up. So now I can actually go ahead and filter my data. Let's just filter this to Midwestern only. And yeah, I'll just do the wrap. Austin. Here we go. So this creates this filter. I can also sort this. So let's go ahead and sort this by sales. So I'm going to click Z to A. And then to make this more descriptive, I'll probably just change this name to Midwestern Austin. Now, if I X out of this filter view by clicking on this button, See, we're going back to our original data, but what's nice about this is that our sorted data went back to the way it was before sorting. If you actually sort your data with the regular filter, when you click this, you unfilter, it's not going to back to the original, it's gonna stay sorted as it was. So if I try this right now, see, create a filter, go here and sort this, Z to A. Now if I go back and turn off, see everything stays the same. So with filter views, when you take it off, the sorting goes back to the original. With regular filter, it does not. So you're actually modifying your original data set. So to bring this back, I'm gonna have to undo this. Here we go. So now we're back to this. The other cool thing about filter views is that if you don't need the filter for a while and you want to go back to your data set, but then you're going to need it later on with regular filters. Once you take it off, now you have to go back and try to filter this all over again and choose all your filter options with filter views. However, I'm going to turn this off. You don't have to do this because you can just access that filter view here and it's going to save all your settings. So if I go under filter view and do Midwestern Austin, see it will filter all the columns I was filtering by and it will also sort the way I had it sorted. Another thing I can do with filter views, so if I X out of this filter view, I can actually go ahead and create another filter view. So I'm going to create a new one. Give this a different name. Now under location, I'm going to search, there it is, Chicago and filter this. And if I X out of this, now I have two filter views. So I go back under my data tab, filter views. See, I have the other one. So click on it. You're back to your settings. If you want the other one, just go back. There is the other filter view. So you can create different filter views. And later on, if you need one, you can just access them, just bring it back. And it's going to bring all the filters, all the sorting options, everything else. You can also use custom functions the same way you use with filters. So you can go here, just do filter by condition. I'll do custom formula is now keep in mind that now because some things are filtered, this cell seems like it's 17, 
but our data starts from A1 and A2 is gonna be the cell we need to filter by. So I'm gonna go here. Year A2 equals 2016. And I'm gonna rename this x out of it and now we're back you want to get it back just go back and open your filter view if you don't need that filter view any longer you can go under this little options icon and just delete if you need something that's pretty similar to what you already have so let's say i made one for chicago over here for 2016 sales i want to keep all the other columns the same i'm just going to change location to a different city so instead of doing all over again, I can just create a duplicate and switch this from Chicago to, let's say, Atlanta. Now we have another filter view. So X out of this. And if we go back, you should see three filter views. And that's pretty much it. It's as simple as that. Now let's talk about subtotal functions and how it interacts with filters. What I'll do, I'll move this data below a little bit from the current location. So let's do something like this. So first of all, let's start by summing up our sales. So I'll just type total sales and here we'll do equals sum. I'm going to click here and then do my control shift arrow key down, enter. So now I'm going to do roughly the same thing with subtotal sales. So let's see. So I'll go here and do equals sub total. Let me actually zoom in a little bit. Here we go, equals subtotal. So now it's gonna ask us for a function code. So if I click on learn more about subtotal, and if we scroll down, see one is average, two count, three counter, four max. If I keep going, nine is sum. And there are also, there should be one or nine as well there it is let's just concentrate on a nine is sum okay so we're going to type nine because we want to sum up function code comma and i need the range of numbers i want to sum up so again click on this one Control shift down enter so that gave us the same number so what is the difference between doing total with a sum and total with subtotal? Well, the difference is if I take this data now and decide to filter it. So I'm going to go data and create a filter and filter this to, I'm going to have to zoom out a little bit and filter this to one of our regions. So Midwestern. If you look at our numbers, my total with sum is the same number. Subtotal is basically just your total after the filter. Now, if I go back and go under data, I'll do some filter view, Chicago 2016. See, I'm getting my Chicago 2016 total number here. And this is my grand total. Let's actually do something like this take this number divide by this number make it percentage roughly three percent of our total sales so x out of this we're back to our regular filter so let's actually take that off as well so if you think about all the other functions that are available it's subtotal function if i just go back here and type subtotal again and there's our 
function code and I'm gonna do learn more one more time see we have average count counter max main all these functions are available separately and the difference is gonna be exactly the same if I use average with subtotal that's the average after the filter so if I switch this to one comma and let me close this and we need our range of numbers so from here all the way down and if I do this also with the average I'm getting the same number until I filter my data this is my average for 2016 Chicago but this is my average in general and that's how subtotal function is connected with your filters so I'm gonna X out of this so a couple of things I want to mention before the end of this video about differences of filters and filter views so I already did mention some but I want to talk about what happens when you have multiple users accessing the same spreadsheet so if I go ahead and apply a filter to this data and filter my data set if somebody else were to open this spreadsheet they're going to see exactly what I see on the screen I'm gonna turn it off now if you do filter views if somebody else were to open this spreadsheet they are not going to see the filter view applied so it will pretty much look like this for them when they open it even though for me as a user I had that filter view applied now they can still go under data and filter views and apply the filter view that one or a different one but it's not going to affect for me as a user what I had applied as a filter view so that means that each user can have their own filter view applied in a different way and one change in one user's spreadsheet in filters is not going to affect the changes in the other users filters and similarly when they sort using their filter views it's not going to affect my sorting order because it's not a permanent change like the regular filter and I think that should cover everything we need to know. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.